so welcome uh, uh, students to this presentation on news framing i'm sure uh, this is one word which is used in uh, very different connotations and uh, there is a very important uh, distinction between how it is used literally and how we should uh, see it uh, as as media and communication students so uh, before we start uh, with framing let me just tell you about how important framing is so this was this research done in uh, 2004 by uh, bryant and myron in uh, journal of communication and they found out that the framing theory if you see that right at the top this is very uh, uh, small probably you can't see that so framing theory is one of the most important theories at that point of time in the articles that were published in journal of communication over so many years so it, this has had a very important contribution in in, in lot of our uh, journals uh, if you see the screen you will find out that uh, we have the two most important journals in the field of communication one is the political communication and the other is the journal of communication and both of them uh, you know have lots and lots of paper on framing so according to thomson reuters web of science uh, these two journals published a total of 33 papers on framing between 1990 and 2000 so within within that 10 year period they had 33 papers but from 2001 to 10 they had about 86 papers so lots of emphasis on news framing as we go along so we will you know study these three different terms and uh, although they are uh, at times regarded as uh, bel belonging to the same family we'll find out that agenda setting and uh, priming has some very vital differences and in today's classes we'll talk about how uh, framing is different from agenda setting and priming i'm sure that these are the terms that we know uh, from our undergraduate classes and otherwise uh, because agenda setting is one of the original contributions uh, to uh, uh, you know the um, theoretical field from the media and communication field so we have an idea about what what is agenda setting and what is uh, uh, priming so we will uh, talk about all those things as we go on uh before i go on to framing i'll talk about uh, uh agenda setting for a moment and agenda setting is uh, uh related to uh, this work by mccom and shaw on the role of media in the 1968 united states presidential election so basically what it meant was that they studied what was the public agenda they did a survey of the people and wanted to find out what is the survey, uh, you know public agenda before that what they did was that they calculated the media agenda from a content analysis of leading newspapers in uh, north carolina in chapel hill so as you can understand that if you have say for example five important news dailies in calcutta and i want to find out that what is the media agenda then i'll have to do a content analysis and based on what they are putting on the front page or how much space they are giving to a certain uh, issue we can find out what is the media agenda so that is a very easy way of finding out it it can be for television news as well it can be for radio and it can be for any other kind of a thing where With, with a systematic content analysis we can find out what is the media agenda and then what these people make up and shot did was they found out through a survey about what is the public agenda that what did they think was the public agenda then in this result they found out that whatever was regarded as media agenda by the media institutions by the newspapers there was what people thought with was the public agenda so whatever media highlights is what people see as being important so this is a very simple way of explaining what is agenda setting it shows that media agenda and public agenda they correlate there is a correlation between media agenda and public agenda so uh, the core uh, proposition is uh, about again you know the other 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 level of agenda setting so one of this is that media tells us what to think about it, it it tells us that okay this is important the other uh, part of agenda setting is that it also tells us how to think about it now uh, why am i talking of second level here it will be clear to you in a moment's time when i talk about framing because a lot of framing or a lot of framing as people know it to be is related or is is very similar to second level agenda setting but important to understand that uh, we are first of all we have to find out what is the first level that me, uh, media tells us that this is important how does it tell us uh, that this is important by 
giving more prominence to those stories in terms of their headlines or in terms of the coverage that they do on television or elsewhere but the second level is it, it, it goes beyond another level it tells us that what part of it is more important so for example uh, they might be telling us that okay covid 19 is is a very important thing but they can also be telling us about you know what to talk about covid 19 whether we should talk about the vaccination part or whether we should talk about other parts as well so that is the second level agenda setting uh priming again is a, a you know extension of agenda setting as i said i have to just give a background to agenda setting and priming before i go to a framing because that's what we are going to discuss here today i just wanted to draw a distinction there will be a, probably a, another discussion on agenda setting and priming later on so priming is a process by which individuals assign weights to particular issues when they make voting choices or or those kind of things so it essentially promotes certain evaluative criterion so when i'm talking about maybe uh, uh, one particular government or one particular institution then what are the things that i should use to judge that particular uh, uh, organization or to judge that particular uh, government or to judge that particular institution so uh, media tells you that okay this is important and that is not important for example in in america for example uh, one party would want uh, it to be about uh, jobs the other would want it to be about nationality so on and so forth so uh, media can play a role in letting people decide that which of these is more important than the other but as i said this is just a background to tell you a, a basic difference between uh, 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 agenda setting and priming and framing which i'm going to just talk about in a, a moment's time so priming hypothesis states that uh, media makes uh, 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 certain issues more salient and that influences the standards by which the governments are going to be judged so they might make uh, say for example um, jobs issues as being more salient so that when people judge the governments they will judge about how good they have been in this job creation or not so as you can understand there is a uh, sophisticated or or, or 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 a subtle difference between priming and agenda setting in agenda setting it only tells us that what to think about and probably in the second uh, uh, level agenda setting it all tells us how to think about that so uh, priming effect examining agenda setting as independent variable and priming effect as the outcome so we'll talk about those uh, independent and dependent later on now we come to the most important definition of framing and whoever has to talk about framing has to talk about robert entman's definition of framing uh, which is uh, there on the screen robert entman defines framing as something which selects certain aspects of a perceived reality and makes them more salient that means it makes certain aspects of reality as more important in such a way as to promote a particular problem definition so as i said in the covid 19 news thing it can be framed to make one particular thing more uh, salient so at times it could be about uh, you know how people are careless and how they are not wearing masks or whatever so the same issue can be framed in different ways and i will come to that in in another moments time as well so framing basically uh select certain aspects of per perceived reality and makes them more salient so that they promote a particular problem definition or or maybe a moral evaluation etc which we will decide uh, which we will talk again in a moments time so framing effect refer not to uh, 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 you know behavioral attitude outcomes but it it tells us how a given piece of information is being presented in the public discourse as i said that this information is not about you know uh, uh, uh what is being communicated but how that information is communicated what is being communicated is is, is what agenda setting is that you know it uh, that uh, compared to say for example uh, uh, you know cricket news maybe football news is more so that is agenda setting but how they are presenting that cricket news is what is framing so how that particular information is presented by making certain things more salient than others is important for our uh, uh, idea of what is framing now uh, there are two different uh, 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 backgrounds or two different backdrops in which the framing uh, theory is 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 discussed i will talk about these two one is the sociological conception and the other is the psychological which is about the behavioral science and we will use the psychological conception slightly more than the sociological 
so this is just for uh, uh, you know a, a reference that uh, uh, we use Irving Goffman's uh, this this uh, fabulous book on on frame analysis. This is a huge book of more than 500 pages, where he talks of frameworks of interpretation. So every every time you know we locate somebody, or every time we identify somebody, or every time we uh, uh, see a particular situation, we do it within certain frameworks. So, say for example, there are many people who would, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, talk to each other in in, in uh, maybe a language uh, which is which is very friendly. So, just by seeing two people, maybe they might even be patting each other's back, or you know, they might be just you know hitting each other or whatever. But they are not fighting. So, somebody who sees it from a distance would know that okay, they are not fighting; they are friends. So, our society is, uh, you know, made up of all these frameworks or schemata of interpretation. By just by looking at those situations, we understand what this is about. So, I, I don't want to, as I said, get into the details. This is just to give you a very slight backdrop to what is, uh, uh, you know, the sociological conception of framing. In uh, uh, maybe in, in a later video, we'll talk more about all these things uh, later on. So. Uh, uh, Goffman basically identified three different uh, processes of, of uh, this uh, framing. He says the first is uh, keying, where they bring into focus particular aspects, anchoring by relating it to uh, some deeper frames, and fabrication means uh, recasting certain dimensions so that they are made more salient. So as I said, this is just about you know your everyday reaction, how it is framed by other people, or how people make sense of what they're doing. So a lot of the times when people in uh, journalism also, they... Uh, bring in some associations they say that okay the, uh, say for example they say that uh, uh, prithvi shaw is the new sachin tendulkar so they are framing him just by using one simple sentence they are framing him as somebody who's very good with batting will do this or who's the best thing or whatever so you frame things uh, just by putting it into a particular idea so instead of saying lots and lots of things we can just put in a smaller uh, uh, you know we can just anchor it in that kind of a situation so that's a very very uh, simple idea of of uh, framing so uh, we have uh, uh, in, in that kind of a thing a frame is a central organizing idea or a storyline that provides meaning so just by as i said just by calling prithvi shaw as the next tendulkar or just by calling uh, uh, you know somebody as the next einstein or whatever or uh, you know uh, it, it can be about uh, movies or any other thing so whenever you we use these metaphors or exemplars or whatever we are providing a central organizing idea on which people can make their own ideas about what is being discussed. So that was so far. Later on, in 2002, this picture is about uh, uh, somebody who won the Sveriges Riksbank Prize in Economic Sciences, which is uh, uh, popularly known as Economics Prize, uh, Nobel, uh, you know, no, Nobel Economics. Otherwise, you know, there is a uh, Nobel Prize is not for economics, but th this Sveriges Riksbank Prize is known as a Nobel Prize for economics. So uh, he is, is, is one person who is who's, uh, largely uh, associated with, uh, you know, providing insights into framing. And I'm just going to talk about some of the experiments he did in th th these uh, uh, wonderful concept of framing. So if you can just see this on the screen, I will try and make it very simple. And this was... Uh, 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 published in American Psychologist of uh, um, in 1984 by Daniel Kahneman and uh, Amos Tversky. As I said, uh, he won the Nobel Prize in 2002. Uh, so he, uh, you know, gave this kind of an example to people. That imagine that the Americans are preparing for an outbreak of an unusual Asian, Asian disease. So mind you, this is about 36 years back. There was no COVID and all that. So that is a very different thing. This is just an imaginary uh, account. Imagine that the United States is preparing for an outbreak of an unusual Asian disease, which is expected to kill 600 people. So it is expected to kill 600 people. Two alternate pro programs are, uh, are proposed. If program A is adopted, so there are two things we can do. If we adopt program A, then 200 people will be saved. If we adopt program B, there is one third probability that 600 people will be saved and two third probability that nobody will be saved. One third of 600 means 200. So uh, when this question is put to people who understand the meaning of one third and, uh, and the first one, even then, if you see the one in the bracket, when it was framed or when the idea was put forth as 
a surety that in program A, 200 people will definitely be saved. 72 people, 72% uh, of the people said that that is a good program. We should adopt that. But in the second one, where they're saying there is a one third probability that uh, 600 people will be saved. So there is no surety. They're saying one third probability. Basically, the same. One third probability that 600 people will be saved means 200 will be saved. There, only 28% of the people said that this is good. So although they are basically the same things, but they are framed differently. So people react to that differently. So uh, the prospect of saving 200 lives is more attractive than a risky prospect of an equal expected value. So as I just said, now let's uh, have the same story in different way. The same story. They gave this story to 155 people who knew that. Now this was put slightly differently. If program C is adopted, 400 people will die. But if program D is adopted, there is one third probability that nobody will die and two third probability that 600 people will die. So again, they are the same things. Again, they mean the same thing. But 78% of the people would opt for the second one where there is a probability that uh, uh, two third people will die. So when there is a surety about people dying, then they are not going to take the first one. So just to, you know, just go back to the first one, when there is a surety then people will be saved, 72% people, people opted for that. So psychology right. works like that. They have uh, these questions and, you know, they have these experiments and based on the experiments, they draw the conclusions. Uh, so as we can understand, the manner in which uh, it, is, it is framed has an impact on how people will react to that. So when there is a risk, they would want to avert that risk. There is a risk aversion uh, available there. So in the first case, it was in terms of the number of lives saved. So that is why people went for that. In the second one, it was uh, more risky. So people opted for the second option. So just to tell you, and I'm sure all of you understand that when you frame something in the positive or in the negative term, it can greatly alter its appeal. And I'm sure all of us uh, have seen all these uh, stories about vaccine being 99% or 90% or 94% uh, uh, successful, etc. They're not going to talk about, you know, 6% people might have this effect or 1% or etc. So when you frame something in positive terms, it alters its appeal. And in, in real terms also, we are asked to uh, talk in, in or, you know, when, whenever people talk about those motivational talks or whatever, they will talk in terms of putting everything in positive terms. Putting something in a negative term can alter its appeal. Again, you know, uh, a very similar thing that, uh, uh, you know, Kahneman talk about. They had a surgery of, of 100 people having surgery, 90 uh, live through the post-operative period, 68 are alive at the end of the first year and 34 are alive at the end of five years. So they are talking about surgery and if people have surgery, 90 will live through the post-operative period. After first year, 68 are alive. After five years, 34 are alive. Then they talk of the radiation therapy. They say that of 100 people having uh, radiation therapy, all live through the treatment. 77 are alive at uh, the end of one year and 22 are alive at the end of five years. So uh, how was it, uh, you know, answered by people? Then there was this uh, uh, in, in the first frame, as you can see, this is about the survival frame where they are suggesting that 34 uh, people are alive at the end of five years. And the second one, they're saying 22 people are alive at the end of five years. So this is being framed as people surviving. In the same thing, they are talking uh, in case of the mortality frame that uh, exactly the same numbers that after five years, 66 people will die. In the second one, after five years, 78 people will die. As you can understand in the first one, we are talking about 34 alive. So if I if I subtract the 34, 400, it will be 66. So basically they are the same things, but told in a different manner. And we see that it produced a marked effect in uh, people's response to that. So people who favored radiation therapy rose from 18% in the survival frame to 44% in the uh, mortality frame. So when it was presented as a uh, uh, you know, survival frame, then only 14% of people you know, uh, opted for that. As you can understand, the uh, surgery is better because 34 are alive here. But there only 14% people adopted this radiation therapy. But when it was framed as a mortality that 78 people will die, and that is when 44% people say that, no, I will rather go for radiation therapy. 
so the advantage of this radiation therapy looms larger when stated as a, uh, a you know a reduction of risk so this framing effect is 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 there among all people it's not only among you know common men it is for uh, physicians or, or or even people who know statistics that you know both these things mean the same so if the same thing so this is not what i am suggesting this is what kahneman suggested in his experiments if the same thing is presented as a mortality frame then people would uh, opt for radiation therapy but if it is uh, uh, you know as a survival uh, uh, frame then people would opt for surgery more so this is a, a very very substantial difference from 18% to 44% so that is why you know uh, framing is is, is a, a very important concept to be understood so it could be regarding the uh, topic of the frame so what are we talking about are we talking about covid 19 so that is one component of frame the second component of the frame is the size and placement so uh, how much importance we are giving to that kind of a topic or you know uh, which which are the uh, level or which are the attributes that we are uh, emphasizing so that is very similar to the second level agenda setting that i just spoke of in a moment's time and then there are the cognitive attributes and the effective attributes what is cognitive cognitive is the thinking function so what are the things that you that makes you think and what are the effective attributes effective attributes are the emotional functions so there are a lot of these uh, function things if they are uh, presented as an emotional uh, kind of a, a result then a lot of people will be impacted by that so that's why you know a lot of people identify with much of you know what bollywood so shows or whatever because many of these things are framed in their effective attributes we'll we'll talk in greater details about that this is a very one uh, you know important uh, uh, model about uh, framing in public relations i'm not going to uh, talk in details about that but it says that situations can be framed differently the attributes of a particular event or a person or an institution can be uh, framed differently how people make their choices that can be made uh, you know framed differently what actions people take what what issues are are in question or who is to be held responsible for for certain things and news framing so this is a very important uh, typology of framing in public relations so uh, i i i just uh, want to skip on to these uh, uh, situations and attributes and all that choices that we have just spoken about uh but uh, important to understand that of late and this is a publication from august 2007 of late we have to have a distinction between two kinds of framing and this is where uh, you know today's lecture has to uh, emphasize uh, the most that there are two different ways in which we we can see framing one of the framing is that in which we emphasize certain elements we do not emphasize certain other elements so that is you know one uh, uh, no, you know narrow way of defining framing but the other way of framing that i just spoke of when i spoke of kahneman and others is to see how similar messages are framed differently so among the new research that is coming up it is not only about you know how uh, or which part is made more important but it is uh, about uh equivalence framing so basically there is a very important dis distinction between emphasis framing and equivalence framing so when we are talking of emphasis then we should not be talking in terms of framing but we should be talking in terms of second level agenda set setting and when we are talking of equivalent things being described differently that is where we can see framing effects more uh, powerfully or that that is what framing should actually be otherwise uh, that is not uh, uh, the right way to describe frames so uh, we we are talking about equivalence frames the information that is being pr presented is 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 equal and how we are framing that particular uh, information as i said it can be positive negative it can be survival mortality it can be about you know giving responsibility to some people and not to other people there are many many different ways in which we can do that and the other one which where one set of concerns are emphasized over other set of concerns that is uh, what we said is a uh, second level agenda setting so that is not what uh, framing is framing should be more about equivalence framing so uh, we are uh, going to talk about uh, the uh, mode of presentation for a given information so um, uh, you know let me just uh, uh, go through all these uh, 
so the effect of particular frames they are are, are strengthen or we can depending on what particular cognitive thinking or what are what are the thinking elements that are using for these equivalent information the information is equal the mode of uh, uh, our our, our uh, you know providing this information or what cognitive schemes what thinking frames we are uh, adopting there is is important to uh, understand in the framing effect so uh, that is why uh, this is uh, uh, seen more as an applicability model so this is mo more about you know looking at uh, uh, framing in terms of uh, uh, being uh, attributed to the interest groups or whatever you know they are the ones who lead to the media frames and then there is the audience frame and from there you can you know attribute uh, the causes or how how people react to uh, that kind of a thing so it, it does not uh, conceive news as as a psychological stimuli but it views news text as consisting of organized symbolic devices that will interact with individual agents memory so it's not just about what as we as newspaper persons or we as communicators are giving but it is also about how people take uh, that information as that is why the audience frames are very very important so you are building up a frame is one kind of a thing but how audience reacts to that frame is again a very important element to understand so uh, it's not just about how it is put out but how people react to that and that is where these concepts of uh, uh, active audience and all that becomes important so uh, as as uh, uh, you know in this handbook of uh, political communication uh, they give such a wonderful uh, uh, you know metaphor for framing so framing is not about having two different paintings so this is this is saying that if you go walk into an art gallery or whatever and you want to you know find out uh, which one you want to buy so if there are two different pictures then that is you know like uh, we are, which i just spoke of as uh, emphasis framing but if there are two very sim uh, you know similar pictures and how they are you know whether it is a gold plated frame or whether it is an aluminum frame or whatever how that impacts people's reactions is, is, is what is to be understood so it is it is not about as i keep on emphasizing it is not about emphasis it is not about putting emphasis on one attribute of the information over the other but it is about uh, uh you know which which uh, you know which 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 are the uh, attributes in equivalent information that we are putting out for people so uh, important to understand the distinction between emphasis and equivalent frames and also to understand the importance of audience members themselves in uh, making a sense of what people are, or, or what is being presented to them so we are not talking in terms of uh, uh, people being impacted by what information is provided to them, but how people make sense of uh, what is presented to them. So maybe uh, the media intends it to be framed in a certain manner, but how people react to that will be very different from uh, uh, you know how people assume it, it it happens. So I understand there are too many uh, intervening uh, concepts involved there, but I'm sure. Uh, uh, this this is a, a substantial introduction to the topic, and we'll have more on that in our uh, future uh, lectures as well.